Welcome to Landlord Diaries, where we talk about midterm rentals and the opportunities behind them. We'll share landlord stories, talk about maximizing investment potential, and discuss how to live the very best landlord life. This podcast is proudly brought to you by Furnished Finder, the place for everything midterm rentals. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. We are back with another episode of The Landlord Diaries and thankful for all of our six midterm rentals. Well, Kelly, Cindy is like the master of all things. She is a property manager. She's an investor. She's a real estate agent. She's all the things and she's all the things because she's been in real estate for years and she has so much experience and um, we get to talk to her primarily about how to determine your qualifications for a rental property and then how to go about getting it. So it's a really great episode today, particularly for anyone who's sitting here thinking, okay, how do I do this? Where do I start? What kind of property do I go for? She really starts at the beginning for us. So um, I encourage everyone to listen in. Um, and please remember that this episode and every episode are brought to you by Furnished Finder. We are the go-to website for all things midterm rentals. So listing your property, finding a property, all of the things. Head on over. Um, you'll also uh, remember that we have no booking fees. It's a flat fee to list your property, which is good for those models. Enjoy, everybody. Cynthia Tant is the broker owner of Gulf Coast Home Experts, Gulf Coast Real Estate Management, and Gulf Coast B&B Rentals. Cynthia is also a best-selling author in the book, The Ultimate Guide to Selling Your Home, How the Nation's Top Agents Break Records. Her bonus chapter is about how to make vacation rentals work. Cynthia offers a one-stop shop client experience. If you'd like to connect with Cynthia, her website is gulfcoastbnbrentals.com. Hello, Cynthia. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I am great, and I am ready to move on from the formalities and get to your fun name. We are no longer referring to Cynthia. We are talking to Doc Cindy. So... How did you get that nickname? Uh, well, my previous career, I'm a recovering academic, so I have a PhD. And so everybody refers to me as Doc Cindy, or some people do in different realms of uh, my associations and my business relationships with people. Awesome. Now, Doc Cindy, we love to invite guests on the show and ask them what your personal portfolio looks like uh, so that they know who they're talking with towards the beginning of the show. Uh, sure. Uh, actually, about 30 years ago, which has been some time, I started investing in real estate when I was a college professor here in the Pensacola area and uh, started going through these years, buying and selling and holding and, you know, the whole process of the real estate process. I've mainly have kept for properties for long holds. Um, so some of the homes that I have, uh, I currently have nine doors, uh, du duplexes, um, single family homes, and uh, some of them are still in my portfolio from 1996. So I have held on to them for quite some time. Uh, I've converted them all over to the short term rental, mid term rental market. Uh, within the past two years. So okay. at the present time, I don't have any long-term rentals. I've just gone the vacation rental route, mainly because I am in a, in a vacation destination mm -hmm. in Pensacola Beach area. Awesome. And uh, I think you manage 20 properties, so eight or nine of your own, and then the rest you manage for others as well, correct? Correct. And because of my uh number of businesses that are one-stop shop, I'm able to find the investment properties for the individuals to purchase. And then, of course, the phone rings. Is that, and then, um, it's an office. Hold on. I know. Uh, I'm able to find the properties that they're looking for, uh, whether they want long-term or short-term. 
then with my uh, handyman contractors, vendors, build out the houses if we need to, do a complete rehab. Uh, we also do the furnishings. We do the uh, interior decorating. And then we also then manage the properties for them. So that's okay. where I've absorbed the other uh, 20 properties at the present time. Awesome. So tell us these days, I know vacation travel can mean a lot of things. It can mean, you know, more of a traditional vacation travel of I'm going to take a week off with my family, but it can also mean you work remotely and you're going to go work from another part of the country for a month or two or three or four. Um, Kelly just came to Colorado and worked here for a month. So tell us what, Pensacola typically sees sees for travelers and the appeal that you see in that area? Uh, well, it's very interesting because we are seasonal because we are the beach and we are in the panhandle. So we do experience colder weather than the, the, the further part of uh, down South Florida. So during our off season in the October, well, se September, October going into March, we do have our digital nomads, we have our individuals coming and staying for a month, whether it's out on the beach or two months, whether they're in town from, a, a, I've had several nurses come in and stay for a three month period of time. Uh, so we do have the midterm rentals here. Um, someone was a wedding, uh, a guy, he just came in and was doing wedding. It was like different people have come in. Most of them are the people that are working from home or the nurses and um, physical therapists who have come in and stayed with us between a month to three months during their rotation time here in the Pensacola area. Oh, good point. Because we forget that traveling nurses like to take breaks in between and go to somewhere fun like mm -hmm. Pensacola or Hawaii, right? Yes, and they get to stay out on the beach for half the price that they normally would during the summer months. So Perfect. it works out really good for them. So even during our winter months, it's very inviting for people to come spend. We do have snowbirds mm -hmm. um, that don't go all the way down south for the, you know, January, February, March. They'd rather be in an area that has sure. actual seasons. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have that market that uh, comes a lot. We also have um, Navy personnel because we have a big military base here. So they may be here from, mm. you know, three to five months and then they're on to their training someplace else. Great. So, Doc, Cindy, your next question, uh, you note that uh, in your book and on your website that you're a one-stop shop for client experience. I think that is so great. And the book also notes that it's actually not many real estate agents that both sell properties um, and manage it for their clients. So can you tell us about your one-stop shop, please? Um, sure. I, I, it's, it's from my own experience, too, that I've done it personally. Mm -hmm. So because um, I am an investor, so I work with investors on the sales side of it. I own short term, midterm rentals. Therefore, I can advise my clients on that avenue of investment if that's what they want mm -hmm. and also long term rental uh, investment. So as having all of that experience over the past 25 years, it really does uh, assist that person versus maybe a realtor who just is selling houses. There's nothing wrong with that, obviously, mm -hmm. but when you start dealing with an investor who wants their focus is doing a short-term or mid-term rental, that's a very different market to, to talk about. And then what right. are the uh, expenses? What are you going to... Um, some people want to do it on their own, which is fine with me. And then they come back and call me and say, no, I don't want to do this on my own. Um, so I also, because I have the different entities and businesses and I've been around so long, I also have the contractors and the vendors and the handyman and the cleaning people and everything that would make mm -hmm. that part of what you would need to do if you got into the uh, short term and midterm rental management part of the business. That is really nice, especially for investors who are not from that area. Um, Kelly and I have talked about my husband and I, we have a, a property in Cape Coral. Huh. That's an investment property. Really? And our realtor down there has turned into our property manager. And it's been so helpful because 
I don't know the first thing about caring for a house in that environment, that climate. It's so different than here. And she has her list of vendors and she has, you know, she knows the market so well. And it's like, you know, when, when you find that person that you can really put your trust in, um, it's just incredibly valuable because there'll be times where I, we don't even touch base for two or three weeks, but I know that everything's happening the way it needs to be happening. And I mean, we're talking post Ian stuff too, that we have repairs being made to the house that I'm like, it's so great to be able to have that trust and to be able to know that we have someone on the ground who is um, an expert at what they do. And she knows, okay, this is how fast we need to get the roof fixed. This is how fast the pool needs to be dealt with. And your tenant's doing okay. Now there's other, she's actually the only property we have a property manager for, but it is a good conversation about thinking about what property type you have, what the location is, um, and how involved you want to be. Um, because there's, there's some properties, especially in different climates. And this is just what I've found so far in our investment journey, that there's some properties that are just needier than others. And it seems to be very tied to kind of the climate, right? To one degree. Um, so I think that's really great that you can offer that, offer that to, um, your clients. I'm very curious to hear, you know, any success stories or things you've learned from helping your clients through the midterm rental, um, in specific. Um, well, first let me tell you, I am from the Cape Coral region. So I went to high school down there, elementary high school. Oh, nice. And when I moved down there, there was maybe 7,000 people that lived there back in the sixties. So that can, if you've been down there, you know, it's, quite changed. Um, so actually I'll be heading yeah. down, uh, over, uh, in February to see family and friends and stuff. So I know that the area very well Okay. and their environment and it's their housing area. is very different than us here in Pensacola. Um, when they mm -hmm. started building out Cape Coral, it was in the sixties and seventies, whereas in Pensacola it was in the 1800, 1850s and sixties. So there's a mm -hmm. big difference in the housing structure itself. Um, so, right. but as far as a midterm, what we found here in the Pensacola, and kind of give you an idea, is uh, during, again, going for some success stories on that, were some nurses that had come in during the pandemic. And so that they were here. And again, I have uh, some nice places in the downtown area and also on the beach. So if they could stay on the beach, they were going for the beach uh, for usually it was about three months. And then, um, yeah, okay. in the downtown area was usually between 30 to 60 days. Um, and they, the beach is beach condo that I manage, but a couple other people manage big homes. I just don't manage the big homes. Uh, and then the in town, the historical homes with one bedroom studios or the smaller home, if they had a family that was coming with them or if they had pets, uh, because condos don't allow it. And I have only a couple of places that are homes that are fenced in yards that we do allow pets. So they wanted to bring their dog like that. So that really helped with uh, one family where um, it was a gentleman coming in just for a three month period of time for a contract that he had with the military. And um, as a civil servant, he was coming in, but he needed to bring his family with three, three kids and two dogs. So we were able to give them a house for that. Oh, the other thing that happened was again with military is when the pandemic hit, they shut down any military going anywhere. So usually there's a, oh, uh -huh. there's a three year, once you're here, you're headed to Japan or you're headed someplace else, depending on their work that they had to. So one couple had just sold their house and his orders got frozen. So he was here for a four month period of time before they would let him go to Japan. Whereas another couple coming okay. in from Japan and they had no place to go. Um, so we were able to accommodate them in the houses that would take bigger families and, and pets. Yeah. So that really helped us. Uh, sounds like a nice variety of reasons people are coming to, to Pensacola. One of the things that I want to talk about before we move into landlord logistics 
is in your book, uh, your chapter of the book, it says that your secret talent is creating wealth through real estate. So what can you tell listeners about that? That's it. I, I'm intrigued by that statement. Uh, sh- sure. Again, I go back to my experience. I mean, I've been doing it for 35 Great. years now. Right. When I came to Pensacola as a professor, um, I did had never even bought a house because I had been in school my entire life, practically. Mm-hmm. So um, when I got into the area and bought my first house, and my brother and I started looking at investment opportunities. So we then ended up buying 10, which you don't want to do that in a two or three month period of time. We learned the hard way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but those properties were just for long term rentals. And uh, the B&B model was not around. Uh, again, this was back in the early 90s. And so we held on to those uh, paid for until the, the first boom, uh, 2006, 2007, where we it was stupid pricing of things that we paid 62000 for, and they ended up selling for 300 and something. I mean, great. that's kind of how it happened. So then we were at that point, and then when the market took the downturn again, we went back through the process of buying and then modifying those uh, houses from the long-term rental to the short-term rental. So from that standpoint of the years of experience, but also assist, I'm still a true educator. I, I, mm-hmm. I have seminars, I help people to learn how they can use uh, from starting with one house to multiple, like again, um, how can we do that? I'm a big proponent of holding for passive income over a long period of time. However, I also work with people who flip houses. So we go and we find the invested property, we get the contractors, we get everybody in that needs to do the work, and then we put it back up on the market and we help them make their money that way to go on to the next project. Uh, we work with people that may have uh, self-directed IRAs where they want to put their money into that and then we, since we have the long-term rental management company and the short term, is we put their money back into their IRA, which they don't touch. It goes through our management companies and um, therefore it's building their wealth and then they're buying the next property. So whether it's um, whatever model that they like, then we're gearing it towards that. Uh, And again, um, experience, education, made some mistakes, nothing's perfect, trust me. Um, But getting in there and getting your, I guess, hands dirty. I mean, seriously, I told myself one day, that was when I was still teaching, I'm on this, the roof of a two story historical home, me on the roof. Now this is 20 years ago, I wouldn't do it now, but I'm up on this roof, putting a screen over the chimney. And I said to myself, what the heck am I doing here? If I fall (laughs) off of here and pull myself. You know, so I, at that point in time, I got to, okay, I know how to do floors. I know how to do a lot of things because I learned the hard way in the beginning, but now I go and I find those people that can do it for me. Mm -hmm. And, um, now some people like to do it all themselves, just like the rental management, do it yourself, start out and then let me know I'm here for you, can help you. And I also help people get started. They may never, ever come to me to be their management team, but Either they purchase it from me or friends of mine or people that (laughs) children of friends of mine (laughs) uh, wanting to get into some advice on how to make it happen. So I think that's always been my um, first option is the education part of it and to try to get people to learn that there is a way to create long term wealth starting with just one house. And then a lot of the military men and women. They may buy a house in one city that they go to, then they buy another one, then they buy another one. I had a young man that had seven houses by the time I met him here, and he ended up buying a commercial building here. So it was just a little bit different out of his portfolio, but then he went on to the next uh, station, next location that he had to go to. Um, So I think it's more of, again, what are your objectives? If it's a younger person and has 40 years before retirement, the world's open. Now, if you're an older person, but you've got a lot of money sitting out there, not maybe making anything for you, then there's ways to do that too, to protect yourself from the tax structure. So I'm not an accountant. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I don't even give any of that, that kind of advice. 
uh, but I know the people to send my individuals that are working with me on the real estate part too, if that's what uh, the information that they're going to need from them. So I tell them up front. Mm -hmm. I love I personal accounts. Your, yeah, all I of your examples are so great because you know, that's really, that's really what it all comes back to is experience and having the right people on your team. And, you know, sometimes it's learning through trial and error. And then there's those who have already learned through trial and error and can give you that advice. So those are, those are great examples. And I forgot to tell you that in between our intro call in this interview, I was at lunch with a friend and she said, yes, I'm thinking it would be nice to buy a short-term rental in Pensacola, Florida one day. <laughs> it's like, hmm, I happen to know a great lady that could both help you buy it and manage it for you. So one day she might, she might be calling you, but that was kind of fun uh, that it happened in between our intro call and our, in oh. this interview. <laughs> And, and, and you really never know, like, mm -hmm. for example, I was in Tulum, I think I may have told you this story. I was in Tulum, Mexico this past February at a resort mm -hmm. and everybody always asks, we start talking and they ask, well, what do you do? Well, I basically, I'm a real estate investor and I, um, property management for Airbnbs. I always use Airbnb as instead of short term rentals. Oh, well, wait, we're interested in that. So. Yes, a couple that I met, they came to Pensacola in October, bought a house. Uh, we got it all furnished and everything. And they're going to actually, they're coming in tomorrow to spend a week here. And uh, we uh, we got a little late start on it because it had to have some work done on it that we had everybody there uh, to get it taken care of. But we'll be going into January with, again, somebody I met uh, at a resort talking about real estate. Oh, great. so everybody gives me a hard time. Well, not everybody, but I've got a mastermind group that I meet with and I, I have, I can tell stories upon stories upon stories of meeting people in an airport, at a restaurant, at a bar, you know, something like that. And that have come into town or bought properties with me, or I can tell you story upon story about that because I talk to people about it. Yep. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So I think, uh, I will transition us to landlord logistics where we can dive into the details of your chapter of the book uh, and let's remind everyone the title of the book is the ultimate guide to selling your home how the nation's top agents break records and then doc cindy's bonus chapter is about how to make vacation rentals work so let's jump into that and we're going to apply it to both the short-term and the midterm strategies so I'm just going to prompt you on each section of the book, and then you can give us a little detail of each. So the first was the type of property. Well, that's also going to depend on the location, which comes in next. The steps that are kind of going into it is a lot of people, if they are looking for a type of property, it's going to tie into, do you want it to be in a vacation destination? Do you want to be at a beach or a lake or a mountain or something like that? So that's going to determine which property it is that you actually want. So a mountain property is going to be very different than that beach property. Mm -hmm. And do you want to have the luxury, which is, you know, four to five, six bedroom homes where, you know, people are paying, you know, 10,000 a week or sometimes a day, depending on location again, um, for your experience. So what type of vacation experience would you be looking for? So me as an owner or someone interested in purchasing a property, what do I want? Like maybe it is determined by my family's needs. Well, we yeah. want to be able to have family meet in, uh, uh, over in Breckenridge or something or come mm -hmm. to the beach or wherever where we can bring the whole family together and that's the ideal of the type of house or the type of property that I would want to invest in. And we do have people that just, that's what they do because they want to come here during uh, the season so they can rent out their condo or be in their condo during the time. From a midterm perspective, again, is the, the uh, property going to have to accommodate a person or fam just an individual person or a couple or a family? Now, most of the midterm folks that we have come into our area, speaking for 
from the perspective of experience in Pensacola have been single individuals uh, or a uh, or a couple. So in that case, the type of property that you'll be looking at is more of a condo or an apartment in a historical home, which we have a lot of historical homes here. And I do have eight of prop apartments like that, that they're just here, you know, for the month, for the two months, for three months, and they don't want a big house. They don't want any responsibility. They want to live in a historical area. Um, so from the type of property, from a midterm Again, from my experience in our area, it's mainly that single person or couple coming through and therefore wouldn't want the larger luxury homes. Um, you're going to see those more in a short term situation, just a week at a time or something like that. Um, and then the location, again, would be uh, it's going to be dependent on seasons, too. You know, South Florida, if you're down there, it's the same temperature, more or less year round. Uh, so they can, you know, take that month or two months or three months and be on the beach the whole time, but they're going to pay a price for it. Whereas us, uh, during the winter months, it's going to be half, half of what you would normally pay for yeah. that month. Or, actually, the monthly rate is what you would normally pay in a week here. And sometimes it's even less. Mm -hmm. And we know that a large percentage of midterm hosts potentially combine the short-term and mid-term style because if you're really going to maximize your property you know that's what's nice about midterm is you could pivot easily to short-term or long-term if for some reason you need to uh, which is really nice so part the second part to the five steps in making your vacation rental investment decisions is what type of traveler do you want to house, right? Right. And that's that's getting down to actually that midterm person. If that traveler is a single person or a couple, uh, then they're going to be um, not, they're, they're going to be more honed into a smaller apartment, but not necessarily because most of your apartment complexes don't rent midterm or short term. And they, the person's only going to be here for a month or two, not seven months or 12 months. Mm -hmm. So, and also they're looking for that house or that apartment that's fully furnished, all utilities included, and they're not having to go out and, you know, bring in all their furniture and everything for a midterm or short-term process. Mm -hmm. So when the investor is looking for that, I let them know the different types of travelers that are coming through. So if they're interested in, from a midterm perspective, if we have someone that's going to rent it for the month, and then we have a two week break before someone else is coming in, we can flip it right into a short term rental because we already have the, the dates blocked out. Mm -hmm. um, and some people come in for a night. I mean, Interstate 10 goes great from Texas to Disney World. And so a lot of people just stop in Pensacola as a one night stay and then they're down to Orlando, uh, which is about even on a 10 hours, eight hour drive. Um, so, but, from, but yeah, but from the midterm perspective, um, yeah, we can fill it with different nights if we need to. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the third of the, uh, of the four, I, you know, it says five steps, but I think it's only four steps. I think I'd made a note wrong there. Thank you, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> A uh, rental income is next. I can get it real back, back or look through it. I read it last night again. I said, oh my gosh, you got to read this. <laughs> you got to reference nice it. Nice preparing. Good I job. <laughs> so. Yep. So rental income. Um, yes. Well, it's it's very big difference from a standpoint of your midterm and your short term versus a long term. And again, I'm referring to long term is going to be that seven months to, to, to a year. Uh, versus a midterm could be a month to three months. And then obviously the short term is going to be your highest income potential from two, about two and a half to three times regular what a short term. And I guess you could say the midterm is mid, it's about in the middle. Um, you're not going to spend the, you know, top dollar for the daily, the average daily rate that a short term is with a midterm. And so the midterm would be a uh, probably about one and a half to two times what the yep. long-term would be. 
-hmm. but not the two and a half to three times at the short term, if you can kind of do those numbers on your head. Now, when someone comes to me and asks me these numbers, I put it all out. And I do tell people that what you're asking me to do for you is not going to work. I cannot produce that kind of income for you or those kind of returns. And I've, I've turned people away. Some people may be able to take you on as a, as a, but I can't, I can't make those numbers work. They won't mm-hmm. work here. Right. In my experience. Expectations so. are important. Yeah. yeah that's exactly. huge. Katie, you adding anything in? No, I think we're moving on to selecting a property, which feels like the grand finale of the process. <laughs> and I also know that a lot of people jump straight to this step. Um, the first step. Yep. Yeah, I can't tell you how many people I've talked to, and you know, they've asked questions about our rental properties, whether it's from us posting on social media or just what, or just it comes up in conversations, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, where's this property at? How'd you like where?" And they jump to the end, right? And then I know that they're going on Zillow, and I know that they're jumping on those sites, and you know, it's fun for the inquisitive mind, but. Unless you have your um, your qualifications or your criteria set, like you are setting yourself up for the biggest bowl of overwhelmed soup that there is to be had. Um, so tell us about how it all comes together and you and you find that magical property. And let me also expand that question to finding that property in today's market, which I know has been an extended challenge for a lot of people. Uh, You're absolutely correct. And that's a great question. And again, it does come down to location because I know the Austin market was just like nuts in the past year and a half. It was 60% overvalued. I mean, they were number two in the country that was over. And in in order to get, you, you couldn't make the money. People, and now there's a lot of very high end houses that people bought that are sitting empty. Um, so we're still, Pensacola is still a little unknown, um, in a sense that yes, you can still buy a house for $200,000. Um, and because you can, uh, you can make, uh, some positive income off of it, um, versus other areas where it's like, it's just not going to happen. Um, now there's some people here that did experience that they wanted to jump on the bandwagon. Um, I had a friend of mine whose friend, actually aunt, paid cash, $550,000 for a house and came to me after the fact and said, didn't use me as a realtor or anyone who had any knowledge about short-term and long-term rentals. Finds out that that house was sitting in a subdivision that an HOA said no short-term rentals. So yeah, there was no research done on that. And I told her right up when she told me where it was, I said, you can't have short-term rentals in there. She goes, well, why not? I said, because your agent says you can't. Right. <laughs> so she goes, well, what about, yeah. So now she goes, well, what am I going to do? I mean, a long-term rental is only going to bring me $2,000 a month. And I just spent $550,000 for this house. Well, you know, I couldn't stop that one, that deal. I couldn't stop it because it already been done. But finding that, uh, again, as I'm talking with investors, I do go through that whole process, first off, finding out what do they want and can we make it profitable? Now, some people do need a negative tax write-off on certain things. And so they don't need that high potential, that return on investment. They actually need a negative to write off certain things, depending on that, which I've only had a couple of people like that because most of the people are coming in and they get the big eyeballs and they go, oh my gosh, I'm going to be able to get, you know, 25% return on my investment. And I go, no, you know, so we go through the numbers. We, we actually then say, well, you, don't forget, you're paying for the utilities and you're paying for the insurance. You're paying for all of these values that let's go look at the house if it fits the well, what's the word I want to use? If it fits the model that we're trying to make you money or we're trying to do this. Right. So again, I have both, uh, lots of spreadsheets that say you're going to make, not you are going to make, but it could be estimated that you could make this, mm-hmm. you know? So if you spend this amount of money for this particular house over this 10, next 10 year period of time, we add all the amount that they spent. We put in, if they have to buy furniture, we put in all this, how long will it take you 
based on the current market conditions to get debt money back from the property. And you throw it out during that period of time. And if it comes red after 10 years, well, we got a problem. You know, so that's the first thing we even look at. So let's not look at that. Let's maybe go somewhere else, some other property, or we go multiple. So we could have a duplex or a fourplex or something like that, which may make and it will, the numbers do show it, which will bring the money into you, um, a better return than on just a single family. So. Right. I will, uh, give a shout out to, uh, I think you referenced Austin maybe about five minutes ago or so. And yes. I, yeah. I wanted to follow up on that where because of the midterm strategy, we were able to buy during the height of the market and we weren't going for all the bells and whistle properties that everyone else was going for. And we typically don't buy an HOA because in crazy markets, HOAs j jump the prices super high to, for maintenance, right? Uh, so we, we have single family homes, typically three bedroom, two bath, some two, I have, we have one two bedroom, two bath. And what was nice was because of the midterm strategy in the heart of all the craziness, people of course still needed places to stay because they were looking to buy and weren't able to buy and you know we're trying to figure out where they wanted to buy and so we were still cash flowing typically somewhere between 500 to 1500 uh per month uh per property because uh you know we were uh able to use the midterm strategy to accomplish that which was nice and of course the one that was closer to the 1500 per month that's the duplex. We had a long-term tenant on one side. We had owned that one for a while. It was our actually our first investment property ever. And we just sold it this summer for double basically. And uh, it was towards the end of the summer. And that was our, that was our highest producing property, but we decided, you know, cash, cash is, is also valuable, right? So we went ahead and sold it. Mm -hmm. We didn't think that it was going to continue to go up too much. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's all around the country. Like there's so many different strategies. And what you're saying is you're really good at helping others figure out what it is that they need and what they're going for to accomplish whatever strategy it is that they have in mind. So that's great. Well, from the education standpoint, mm -hmm. the more, better, more, more education you have about it, mm -hmm. the better your results will be. And then you understand it. Now I have some, one person who says, just find me the properties. And if it hits this mark, buy it, we'll buy it, mm -hmm. you know, cause they already know their numbers. They know what they're nice. looking for. And we've been successful to certain things now. And there's others that literally go hand in hand. This is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And going from, you know, um, for this is one that <laughs> was a good learning experience for me, a four bedroom historical home had to completely do everything in it as far as the four apartments, but there, but we needed a roof. We had to have new wiring, new plumbing, uh, HVAC installed, but he got it at a, a really good rate. It, he bought it for 450. It's a 3000 square foot home. Four apartments are already there, had a hundred into it. So at 550, then the short-term rentals he was bringing in between six to seven thousand dollars a month. Um, so that was during the high part of it. Now we're down to four thousand. I think we're at four thousand dollars a month during the slow term. But that was a great investment as we looked at. Even though he was going to have to put out the hundred thousand, that that one bedroom apartments downtown Pensacola completely full all the time, in and out. I think I think everything you guys are saying is just really emphasizing the the process of coming up with your criteria, mm -hmm. right? And that, that really is the essence of the process that you've gone through here. Because like Kelly, if you said that you wanted to host bachelorette parties and out of town vacationers, like your portfolio could not look like what it looks like right now, right? And thank same thing for thank me. Thank goodness it doesn't, but oh, that is the right. right property for some people. Right, I Who mean, would we, want to? Yeah. Our latest property we closed on is a two bed, two bath condo outside of Iowa City, right? Like 
it's for nurses. It's for people who are midtermers. And if it were to look, if we were looking for a different audience, it would look completely different. The numbers would look completely different. The model would look completely different. Everything is based on making those criteria and making them fit your needs, right? Um, so I think that is really, really important. Um, and also something that you said that resonated with me was getting to know the market. Um, and if, if like Kelly knows her market really, really well because she lives there. And how long have you right. lived in the Austin area, Kelly? Since 2010. Okay. So she knows it. <laughs> now I'm in Denver. I know the Denver market pretty darn well. And I know that I can't afford things here. <laughs> At least yeah. for, you know, the way, the way that the numbers would work better here at least from my price range and the areas that we would be interested are more of the short-term rentals, but short-term rentals are starting to be very heavily regulated here. So mm -hmm. that's why I know that we're, you know, we invest typically outside of our own market and then you have to go and you have to get to know a local expert or you have to spend time there. You have to go somewhere you do know, even if it's your not, not your home area. So all of these things are, so insanely critical. Um, and we've actually talked to some um, guests who have encouraged people to write all of these down. Right. And then it's like, okay, if you're looking at a property and it does not meet one of your qualifications, it's, it's, it's out. It doesn't matter how good, it doesn't matter how pretty it is. It doesn't matter where it is. If it doesn't fit your list, it's out. Um, well, and, and a lot of people, as they <clears throat> start experiencing this, B -B, everything's going blah, 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 you know, this like it, their investment, it's an investment. So the numbers are what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people that they come in, they start, Oh, this property is, you know, on the beach and blah, 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 it's blah. It's so pretty. Said, but, yeah, exactly. And that's you not great, care but you're not if it is pretty. <laughs> well, and then your HOA fee is $2,000 a month. Are you kidding me? Okay. So, it, knowing and also finding the people in the market. I mean, a lot of people want to buy their investment properties without a realtor. I don't know why, but a realtor as an investor is your best bet. Now, not every realtor is alike. Is, you know, going, you should interview realtors too. Yep. Um, and if you do want to do, that's why I market the way I do, or I tell people and work with people the way I do. It's like, if you want to, in now, I only know the Pensacola market. I only buy in the Pensacola market, sell in the Pensacola market. I always have, whereas I have a lot of friends that buy and sell all over the place and that's fine, but that's not my model. So um, when people come to the Pensacola market, then I can at least share my experiences with them, the ups and the downs. And I've always been very successful, even though I didn't have a clue as to what I was doing in 1994, but my realtor was an investor. And whatever she couldn't buy or whatever she found a good deal with, she would bring it to my brother and I, and we got it. And I'm glad that we did. I mean, again, this is 1994, but we ended up with a property that had two duplexes and a triplex for $62,000 total. Yeah, two duplexes awesome. and a triplex wow. overlooking the water. Now, the reason being, and this is kind of sad on that one point, is the guy was getting a divorce and didn't want to give his wife money. So he just, here, you can have it all for 62000 Now, we wow. did put a lot of money in to the code to, to do everything. But starting way back then, the rents were only $200 a month, you know, overlooking the water. So as we started renovating and kicking those tenants out long-term, switching them over to short-term, now I'm getting $115 a night from a short-term or $75, $85 a night midterm in these same places. And that was 1990, almost 30 years. So I'll, I'll have these properties. So, right. um, so the person today that's looking for, you, you may have to go to places, like you said, in Iowa city, big medical community for university of Iowa. You know, I used to teach at Iowa state, so I know the competition. Oh yeah, right. you know, uh, and I'm a native Floridian and Iowa is way too cold for me. It's so cold. Uh, <laughs> I, I love the city. I love Danes, Iowa. I love, I just couldn't handle the cold because no, I can't summer, either. I'm out, I'm like, I'm <laughs> a warm weather. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Um, but, well, uh, 
around college towns. That's the other thing. If you want to get into the college market, uh, one of my friends, he's outside, uh, he's got, I think he's got 10 properties around Ohio state. That's his model. And that's what he buys. He doesn't go out of crazy. He's just looking at that one bedroom because guess who's coming to visit? Mom and dad. Uh, Mom and dad. Guess about the football games, all of the events football that are coming. Too. Everybody that's coming in, you know. And um, so that's a whole different model too. Mm -hmm. uh, My mom's actually sold... a, a host in uh, Bryan College Station, uh, Aggieland. Oh. Whoop. Yeah. And, okay. and so she's got a cute little 2-1 uh, on Airbnb during the game season. And then the rest of the time, she has it available for traveling medical professionals or anyone coming through uh, for, um, you know, digital nomad uh, or whatever reason they're traveling. And so she's, she's about to have her second Furnish Finder guest in her home uh, outside of the, the football season, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's, let's move on to the next question, which is, uh, the, the book wraps up those four steps with the reminder of don't forget about the additional expenses you want to consider to add into that price. What's, so what are some of those additional expenses that people forget about? Well, the first thing is if it is their firm first, some people actually buy investment property before they even own their own home. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm finding there's some younger individuals, you know, now in their twenties and even, th well, thirties and even twenties that actually have some money or have jobs that are producing some significant income. They don't even have their own home yet. Hmm. And so they're looking for, well, how do I buy a house? Mm -hmm. Um, and so obviously the, not only the cost of the house, but your insurance, in our area, we do have hurricanes, so our insurance is quite high. Um, and then your taxes from just the purchase of the house and the closing costs, costs associated with that. So that's stepping that through that process. Now for the person who's going to do the, the midterm or the short term, the, the property is gonna have to be furnished. So now you've gotta put nice, Furniture. You don't have to put top end if it's not a luxury, a part, a luxury unit that you're doing. Mm -hmm. On the beach, you do. Uh, in town, it's just going to be comfortable. Um, if your areas of historical home, any kind of antiques or things like that, but you have to decide. Okay, if you're going to be doing this over a number of years, you can't. I don't want. I don't want to say the word cheap but you can't put something in there that someone's going to sit on and break the chair. You know, so there's things that we have to address. Are there currents, uh, cur uh, curtains or draperies or blinds? Do we want to use that? Um, you've got to figure out, okay, dishes, glasses, pots and pan. I mean, everything that you would normally put into a home, you're going to have to put into this property. Mm -hmm. So giving it a relative budget, as to if you spend $250,000 for this house, well, let's look at how much more it's gonna cost you to get the sheets and the towels and the, you know, it's not just one set of sheets. I can't believe how many people, oh, we only have one set of sheets. Are you kidding me? You know, no, you've gotta have at least three sets of sheets. And then some people limit the number of towels in their place. I go, why would you do that? If you had a hotel, they're gonna be bringing it every day to you, but not, you can't have just two towels. Because then I come to the point, I said, how many ladies and sometimes guys, but primarily women who have long hair, who use two towels when they take a shower, men don't think of that. They just like, <laughs> oh my God, I didn't even think of that, that they would use two towels when you're only giving them two towels for a week. Are you nuts? You know, <laughs> so there's a lot of things that you have to think about. Mm -hmm. um, and then do you provide things like coffee and all of that in your unit? Do you give a, like a nice gift or something as they're coming in. We do a nice bottle of wine. You know, that's part of that cost that it's going to come out of um, the total amount of money that you're bringing in. Now we do some different things to make sure it comes out of what the guest pays at mm -hmm. times, but um, it just depends. So those hidden costs and as far as maintenance, because a lot of people don't think about, well, you know what? We do have nasty little bugs in Florida. 
So maybe not in Denver because, it's, <laughs> but um, you're going to have to have pest control. We just have to have it because you're in the hospitality industry. So if someone's in the house for midterm for, for three months and you've got these pesky bugs, we've got to do something to take care of it. You know, so our spreadsheets and everything that we use as a guide um, to let them know from the very beginning, this is what we require you to put in the house. This is how much we need for dishes. This is how much you're going to need for glasses. You're going to need for pots and pans. And it's interesting because some people, they'll end up buying their own stuff for something you never thought of because it was one off thing. Like, why would I ever think of this? And they'll just leave it. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Uh, that is thoughtful I, uh, when people do that. My dad always buys new pans for people because you know how often oh. uh, travelers don't care about the pan and so they'll scratch it up or use some sort of metal utensil. So that's his go-to. Yeah, we spend the time replacing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Or like one of my properties is the flamingo pad. And over the past three years, I've acquired a ton of flamingos. Because people bring all kinds of stuff that have pink flamingos, mm -hmm. whether they get the, the refrigerator magnets or beads or pictures or, I mean, they just leave it because they think it's a cool place. So I have pink flamingos everywhere. Um, <laughs> but, and, and that's a really good, and that's a, that's actually the, the house that gets the most midterm people coming in. Um, it's a two bedroom, uh, one bath, and it's in a very nice neighborhood and it's, they just love the neighborhood and it's close to the hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, so we get them in return, they're coming back. Uh, so that's been very, uh, uh, actually it's already booked out through January, February, March already. Okay, that's awesome. Um, awesome. You that. know what I find gets forgotten a lot? Cleaning towels. I feel like checklists leave cleaning towels off. So someone throws up, you're like, ah, what do we clean it up with? And you try to find some, not so white towel and it's hard to find sometimes <laughs> See, that's amazing because like that comes with just kind of like lifestyle differences that you might not think of when uh -huh. you're either renting somewhere or when you're furnishing it because i would never use a real towel uh-huh well, right but no people do you know what i mean no people do well sometimes that's your only option if, they, if there's right. no other option to use. But my, my point is that it just kind of brings up like different things that people use that you might not realize other people either use or don't use. Mm -hmm. right? right. Or like there's kids, like someone, there's some people who use a blender every single day. Well, I haven't touched my blender in two months. Right. Right. Well, there's other thing is having the black makeup um, for makeup uh, di uh, washcloth. You know, so don't use the white towel. It mm -hmm. says makeup right on the thing. Use it. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. But no, that was brought to my attention on the rags because on the bigger houses, we do have them, but we don't have them in the smaller ones. I said, oh, my gosh. So <laughs> I must add those. Too. <laughs> we learned that. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and actually, most of the time, if you s stay in contact with your mm -hmm. guests, and for example, if you do have a midterm guests, but there's no washer and dryer. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, if they're in the building I'm in now, there's a washer dryer here and I'll let them come down, mm -hmm. you know, if they want, if they have to do something quick and use the, the washer dryer, but we have to let them know that there's none in the building. Mm -hmm. You know, if that's something that you need, which we just lost somebody because of that situation, we can't provide that to you right now, but it says it right in the description right. that there's no washer and dryer. Right. Um, mm -hmm. It's important but, to pay yeah, attention so to those details. Uh, one thing that I do that is a tip for those who are interested is if it's oftentimes, it's commonality that a towel might get a spot on it, right? Like things accidentally get bleached at times or maybe a white one got washed with the blue ones, etc. And so rather than throwing it away uh if it's one that's still in good shape not dirty but still in fine shape then i'll cut it up and make that a cleaning towel and put it underneath the sink so it's then you've got you know you're pulling from your supply to restock your other supply which is kind of nice i think yeah, so no, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. we i think too. we're yeah. almost at one hour so katie oh, i think God. we should do one more question each which is hard because I had like 10 more, but we're, we're just out of time for that. So I am going to go with 
If you could spend one day in Pensacola, what would it look like? Oh, gosh. What time of year? <laughs> Whatever time of year you want. Um, well, let's let's go with the summer because that's the, the big time that everybody comes. Um, we are known. Uh, I don't know how we got this title, but now we are the South Southern City of Festivals. Because the what? we have a S Southern City of Festivals. Okay. So we have a lot of events that come in. So you may at some point in time come in when we are having an arts and crafts festival uh, in downtown area. So you could come in on a Saturday. Actually, every Saturday we have something like that. Um, and then uh, expend the time in a downtown area or if you are going, if you choose to go out to the beach. Now, some people will come to Pensacola and just stay at the beach the whole time. They'll never come in town, which they're missing out on a lot of history. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a ton of history here. We've got a uh, minor league baseball team. That's the, the stadium is right on the water. It's highlighted as the best uh, minor league team in the country um, because of its location. Um, we have a lot of different uh, golf courses. If you wanted to come for golfing, uh, they finally have opened up NAS back up so that you can go and see our Naval Museum, which is just amazing because the Blue Angels are here. If you're here on a Tuesday or Wednesday, they start practicing back up in January. They practice here so you can see them in the sky uh, before they go off to their shows. So if you're in just for one day, you'd never be able to see everything. Uh, it would depend on whether you wanted to uh, be a downtown history or the, any, yeah, there's just so much to do. I, I wouldn't even be, you couldn't do it in one day. You have to come for more than one day. For <laughs> lots of Red Bulls. Just keep chugging. No. Energy yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and see, we're a very small community. So you can like, not in Austin or Denver. I mean, you can get around our whole place for 20 minutes. I mean, it's 20 minutes out to the beach or 20 minutes to the base right from downtown. And there's, we don't have traffic jams and, you know, that kind of stuff. So um, it's easy to get from place to place too. That's good. So Katie, what's your last question? All right. My question is you have been an active investor in many cycles of the market, right? The ups, the downs, <laughs> the ups, the downs. Um, I'm very curious what advice you would give an investor during the, it, for the point we're at in the cycle right now, right? Where interest rates are a little bit higher. Um, inventory is still pretty low. People don't want to let go of their equity, but there's still investors out there wanting to find good deals. Like how are you navigating the waters and what would you recommend to let's say first time investors just to, just to hone it in a little bit? Um, well, again, I'm going to refer to my area since I own That's fair. the market. Yep. Yeah, in my area, um, we didn't take the big highs and the big lows that you've seen in a lot of the bigger cities around here. Um, so the investment opportunity is still here. The thing would come back to what we start off at the beginning is, what is it that you want to do with this investment? So from the market per se, um, we are seeing, uh, our inventory is increasing and the people still out there, they have the money. Uh, a lot of, as a first time investor, it, it, there are some places to get money that would be for a midterm or short term rental. Um, but most of them are gonna be like a second home if they own a home so that they can get a better interest rate. Right. Now from our, yeah, right. So from our market though, um, we still, again, we do have houses in that, hundred thousand dollar range that would need some renovation to that we could show you to make money off of it but that's our area now that's not on the beach i just love when someone sends calls me up and said hey you know i want to invest in 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 property there and i go okay what would you like well i don't want to spend more than fifty thousand dollars and i want to be able to walk out to the beach in the water i said well i do too but guess what that will never happen you know <laughs> you know so yeah. it's setting those expectations that you know, but based on like um, talking to someone from California or even Austin or Denver and you say, oh, my gosh, you can still get a property. I have like, for example, for sale, uh, 
for $250,000. It's a three bedroom, one bath, fully ready to go B and B house. And she, she, the gal made $50,000 last year. That's a great investment. She just took it off the market uh, for a couple of months because she had a midterm rental. She wanted to keep in. She goes, I'm going to take it off the market and keep that money. I said, okay, whatever you want to. Um, but you know, again, it comes down to even across the country, we're different as far as yes, our inventory was very small and, but our prices didn't go like crazy. Um, like they did in other parts of the country. That's why I think it's still a very attractive area to come to, not only for vacationing, or but to come to in your rotation of military or whatever the case may be from a midterm perspective, that that investment tool is still out there in our market right now. Love well, it. thank you so much for being here. Remind everyone if they want to connect with you or get that uh, referrals for agents that also manage properties around the country, how should they reach out to you? Several different ways. Um, uh, in my book, I think on everywhere you go online, Cynthia Tant, <laughs> you're going to see my phone number, which is 850-393-5134. I have several different emails, but we'll go with the one that I've had for 35 years, practically 30 years. It's Cindy, C-I-N-D-Y, at move, the number two, and then FLA, like Florida, FLA.com. So Great. that's my main one. Uh, do have different websites, the www.gulfcoastbnbrentals.com is for my B&B rentals. It's really not fully functional, ready to go right now, but it will be in January. And then Gulf Coast Home Experts is my brokerage um, that Great. I do um, get people into the properties that you would like to, if you're an investment mode. Love it. Well, thank you for being a Furnish Finder host and we appreciate your time and for sharing your story. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>